What is going on guys? Victor here from Land Shark Fishing TV and in today's video I have Tom Lewis once again joining me and we are gonna go over, well I'm not, he's gonna go over tides, current, um, the four day window and a bunch of other terms that as a snook fisherman you're gonna want to know about. Hi guys, um, if you're new to snook fishing or if you're a seasoned guy that's been doing it for a while and want to pick up a few extra tips, I'm gonna offer you some tips here. Um, you can try. Um, I found them to be tried and true. Uh, not all the time, just like fishing is. You know, just nothing's a foolproof. You can't go every night and catch fish. But I'm gonna go over something that I learned from the head marine biologist for FWC. And with snook, there's a specific thing. It's called the four day window. Probably works for other fish also. But right now we're talking about snook and only snook. Four day window is, 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 is when a group of fish go on a feeding pattern on the first day. And if you can find that pattern, whether it's two o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon or right at dark, usually it coincides most of the time with moon phase. It coincides with a tide change, a certain time of the tide. And you know, if you can get on that bite and follow it, you know to add it 45 minutes roughly to the tide the next day because the tides get an hour later every day, pretty much. Um, with that being said, if you get on that bite the first day and add an hour to it, go to the exact same spot and fish it, and usually you have a four day window to have opportunity to produce fish. Now, after four days, usually those snook, because of bait or whatever, they change their pattern and they'll flip on you. They'll either move, fish the other tide, or if they were biting on the first hour of the income, and all of a sudden they'll swap and they'll bite on the end of the tide, which is you know four or five hours later in the night. Or sometimes they'll flip and they'll bite on the other tide. Um, with that being said, the four day window has been proven. There's only one problem with a four day window. <laughs> if you only fish twice a week the way I do most of the time, if you don't know if it's the first day or the fourth day. So if you get on a really good bite and you get back the next night and the conditions are the same, and there's no fish to be had, you probably got the fourth day. You missed out on one, two, and three, right? Okay, my favorite tide, we're gonna go over the tide thing. Okay, my favorite tide is usually not in the middle of the tide. I like, once the tide picks up after 30 minutes, I like that, that hour, and I like it when it's just starting to slow down at that following hour. Those two hours of that six hour tide, which I call it the second hour and the fourth hour, are my, my favorite time to fish. And the reason being is, just I have more luck now. The current is not flying, it's not slow, so you're getting a sweep, but it's not overpowering. And these fish are more active during those two hours. Now, that doesn't mean you can't catch fish the entire tide. That doesn't mean you can't catch them on slack tide. Um, as we've all been fishing, if I'm in the boat or I'm on, I'm on the water and I got a pole, I'm casting. So I catch fish sometimes when I don't even think I'm gonna get one. But those are the two hours of the tide, whether it's incoming or outgoing. Now, there's one more thing I wanna pass along with this. You can actually follow the tide and fish the second hour of the tide or, or a specific time of the tide at more than one location, but you have to be kind of quick about it. For example, if you go to the jetty in Fort Pierce or jetty in Boynton, Island, wherever, whether jetty Sebastian or wherever you're at, you walk out and you catch that first part of the tide and you fish it for 30 to 45 minutes. And if you don't, you catch one or two fish and it bites over. If you chug it back to your truck or your car, move inside the river, you can catch that same tide inside. And you can follow it right down the river. You can hit five bridges in a five hour period and pretty much fish the second hour of the tide the whole time. I've done it quite a few different times. And again, that works for the incoming or outgoing. Um, but find that feed, stay with it, put that four day window and opportunity, you're gonna catch more fish. Okay, I just wanted to add one thing about the bridge fishing, especially for you guys that are beginners or you know trying to learn how to jig fish. Um, I'm asked every day, Tom, I'm throwing jigs, I gotta bounce it off the bottom the whole entire time on the cast, correct? I said, no. No, that's not correct. It's great for me, because lead sinks and hooks eat rocks, and I'll sell a lot more jigs. 
secret to jig fishing is, is keeping your jig within three foot of the bottom. Okay. If you ever see a snook, set him on his belly and look at him. His eyes aren't on top like a flounder and his eyes aren't on the side. They're like 45 and that fish is looking up at this angle here. So he is seeing a profile in front of him that comes up this way. Okay. Now with that being said, you take your jig and if it's on the bottom, he can eat it. But that jig can be, he can be sitting right here. And that jig can come over his head by here and he'll turn and eat it. Okay. So with that being said is, the secret is throwing out hitting bottom on full cast. Don't worry about bumping the rocks or bumping the sand anymore. Just reel. Reel the speed of the current. Um, bring it in. You can vary how deep you throw the jig. And what I mean by that is, we talked about the shadow line. We talked about the shadow line on the surface of the water. We talked about the shadow line on the bottom. We also have the shadow line in the middle of the column. Okay, These fish are not always on the bottom. Depending on the bait that's in the area, these fish will be elevated. If they're feeding on bunker or shad or pogies or popping shrimp or crabs or whatever they're eating, uh, mullet, these fish can be anywhere from the shallow line on the surface all the way down the bottom down to the structure where you're standing at. So with that being said, the secret is throw out. I always fish the bottom first. Let it fall to the bottom, okay? Then don't worry about making contact the whole time. Just reel. Okay, bring that jig in. You can throw, you can let the jig fall. If you're in 20 feet, count. Okay, it's 20 foot of water. I'm gonna count to five. I count to five, it hit the bottom. Okay, so I know on a five count, I'm on the bottom now. The next cast, count to two, two and a half. Now you're middle column. Or you can might want to make some casts, throw out. Don't even let it sink, just reel. Well, sometimes those fish are only that far in the water. And by that covers the top of the surface all the way to the bottom. You will lose less jigs, which isn't good for me. But hey, I'm, I'm a fisherman and I want to help you guys out. So with that being said, jig fishing 101, cast, the bottom hit. Don't worry about the contact. Bring in the speed of the current. Learn the area. Catch more fish. And that's what I really hope I'm doing for you. Thank you. That was the video, guys. I want to say thank you to Tom once what? again and uh, hopefully now that's a good beginner's guide for you to pick up some tips and maybe you know give you some more confidence that way when you're going out on the bridge now you uh, you know you have some tools to use and one thing I want to stress is you know Tom didn't become a good snook fisherman overnight you know it takes years and years and years and it takes practice and it's just going and casting and casting and casting. You might have to lose 15 jigs before you catch your first snook, but once you catch one, you know, you'll follow a pattern, then you'll catch another one and another one. You quickly learn, you know, you see where to cast, how far to cast, and that, that's what it comes down to. You know what you say? Oh, absolutely, 100%.